What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're engaged, and we like to get scared together. Hey, welcome back. We took last week off because last week was that, like, it was like Blackout Tuesday. We're like, no one really knew what Blackout Tuesday uh, implied. But we uh, we took the week off because we are, well, one, just, you know, it felt like considering what's going on, I just felt weird releasing something on Tuesday when people were purposely not releasing stuff. And we are also part of the Roost Podcast Network, part of Rooster Teeth, and they also were taking the day off. And then I just decided I'm just not going to publish anything this week. It feels weird. Uh, so instead we did a... Uh, a stream oh and for you know for some context if you're listening to this in the future mm-hmm. and you're like what the heck am I talking about yeah we're, we're in the middle of like I mean historically large protests against pruly, uh, police brutality um it, it, I mean, it's been like this whole year so far is truly it's a wild year man it really is I, it, it is comparable to like a 67 or 68 mm-hmm. you know 67 is like no 68 the crazy 68 the crazy like yeah. the crazy crazy we one. haven't had assassinations which that's is true nice. we have not yeah. had assassinations. let's yeah. hope that stays yeah, that Jesus way Jesus christ yeah um but anyway yeah i i think i would it'd be fun to keep streaming and doing some like more charity oh, streams yeah. we we streamed roller coaster tycoon instead of a podcast and donated all proceeds to the equal justice initiative mm-hmm. um so i would like to do more of that um especially as long as these protests are going on because people are gonna need you know supplies bail fund money etc um but yeah I, I guess i just you know i think i don't know if you've been following either of us on twitter we're pretty engaged with this whole thing i've been talking about it a lot but if you just listen to the podcast and are, are wondering our opinions on it for some reason <laughs> these two <laughs> movie podcasters opinions uh i mean like look we i'm so proud of all of you who've gone out to protest I, I it's incredible like i i'm just so impressed by like especially like this time it just feels like the response has been so like this this really does feel historical like this feels like a sea change um and I guess I just want to say, like, we, you know, we, especially James, will sign off with, with Be Good People. And it's something that we, like, we both really mean when we say it. We don't put it on merchandise. The only merchandise we've ever put it on, all the proceeds went to charity. Like, because we will never make a profit. We'll never, Be like, yeah, this, it's not like part of a, it's not like a, it's not like a brand, a catchphrase. Yeah. Or like a, <laughs> but it's just something that, like, we feel as, uh content creators it's people it's a response <laughs> yeah as people with some kind of platform responsibility to use and to like be a role model in some capacity and just like i think in this moment if you want to truly like embody the idea of being good people just just like just listen to what people have to say you know who are affected by this um listen to people who are angry um maybe look past your discomfort with their anger and try and really really listen and understand why and you know don't leap to immediate judgments about people who are maybe acting a certain way during all of this because they have lived a, a life that is so incomparable to maybe anything you've ever lived you know and also don't conflate uh, you know, the actions of some with the actions or yeah, the of all. Yeah, of course. Sure. And also in, in that same vein, listen to them, what they are proposing will fix this. These are people, like, the activism and, and, like, ground game, you know, like, people dedicate their whole lives to this because their lives are affected by this. It's like, it really, it is a matter of life and death for so many, and you know there's right now like well, today what minneapolis was like maybe is like dismantling their police department mm-hmm. um so like just just you know if that's if it if all this is overwhelming and maybe seems radical some of these solutions like take it just take a moment and listen to what 
that entails and what those solutions will ultimately be and what those will look like because these are you know I don't know I don't want these aren't like flippantly uh proposed ideas or solutions these are not just like wishful these are like people who've dedicated their lives to understanding the systemic nature of of police brutality and what will best fix it uh i I guess i'll clarify we are firmly on the side of you know black lives matter duh i shouldn't have to say it yeah that's the thing is uh in case you you need to hear it black lives matter obviously and you know part of me uh I, i i haven't done anything on kill counts or like said anything in those because i just feel like it's not necessarily the best vehicle for that because i i I feel like anything I did in a kill count would be more performative than anything. You know, it would come off as shallow like corporate. It, yeah. It know, already the, feels a little corporate, to, it, it which is, to get which there, again, yeah. if you, if you told me at the beginning of the year that <laughs> like Disney would be saying black lives matter. Right. Yeah. It's again, wild. it's been a hell of a decade, but you know, so just in case you missed again, we said on Twitter, I, I feel like that's a platform where, wherein I can better explain and uh, you know, not just say a catchphrase and as, make you assume that like, Oh, I'm, I'm, on the right side of things. Uh, I like platforms wherein we can explain ideas more. So podcasts, we're doing that right now. Mm -hmm. Twitter, I'm all over Twitter, my personal account. So hit me up there if that's, if that's what you want to see. And just in case anyone's like, why isn't he doing anything in the kill counts? It it feels performative and I I can't go on a two minute spiel in the top of a kill count. Yeah. You know, but rest assured we're with you. And we're proud of you protesters. We'd be out there if it wasn't for COVID and Chelsea's asthma. Yeah, stupid asthma. Yeah. Um, also get tested if yeah. you uh, were protesting, please. Please. The, the virus doesn't care about uh injustice. Yeah, there's still a <laughs> pandemic. Yeah. And if you're feeling really overwhelmed by this, if you, if maybe this is the first time in your life you've uh, felt a calling to take some kind of action and maybe had your eyes opened to the injustice of the system that we live in and feel compelled to do something, but you're not quite sure what. Maybe you don't have money to donate. Maybe you can't really go to a protest. I I would even suggest writing to uh, people in jail. There are websites that will set you up with a pen pal. They, they're not going to set you up with like a <laughs> confirmed serial killer or something <laughs> like that. You know, but these are... No, you be- have to seek those out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But these are people who, like, you know, often are wrongly convicted or convicted, you know, like drug related offenses. Yeah, like, nonviolent offenses. Yeah, you know, it's, um, but these are really good organizations that will set you up with, you know, people, because jail is so fucking lonely. Like, it's isolating. Yeah, and scary. And the, like, someone will be so happy to get a letter from you. And that's something so easy to do. Um, I think you just have to pay postage or maybe even the, the, the website could, I'm not sure if the website does it for you or not, but anyway, that's my suggestion for if you're looking for something to do, you know, that's a really good, like person on person way to help, you know. But now let's talk about snakes and crocodiles. Yeah, it's because now we're okay. Now we're done talking about all the serious stuff, and yeah, there's so much you know real world conflict and yeah, sometimes ev- everyone's button heads. But let's talk about a fight between a snake and a crocodile. Yeah, uh, we're doing our creature feature in the summer, <laughs> and we watched Lake Placid, bleh, and we watched Anaconda, fun, yes. and then we watched Lake Placid versus Anaconda, which was fun it was a lot of fun yeah yeah if yeah we are officially doing creature feature summer i can't believe you already owned it i bought all the lake placids and all the anacondas <laughs> oh, at some okay, point most right. of them are not available on blu-ray they're just dvd mm-hmm. that 480p nastiness but yeah yeah unrated version unrated as hell no, there are so many breasts <laughs> in this film um yeah <laughs> so i guess this is it's so I feel like by starting our Creature Feature Summer off with this, we've technically been doing Creature Feature Summer for like a few weeks then if yeah. we're doing this third. So like, all right, we're 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 just fully committing, I guess. <laughs> Good Lord. I, I like that I accidentally, you put the DVD in and I <laughs> accidentally called it Lake Placid V Anaconda. And you're just like, hun, it's not a Supreme Court game. <laughs> <laughs> Which made me think, what would they be? I'm pretty sure it'd be like a zoning thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Yeah, definitely. Like the, you didn't get permission from the city to permits, build, to yeah. build a nest here. And then it's like, do Americans have a constitutional right to go fishing in land that is state owned, mm. for instance, or um, are do, do Americans have the right of self defense if the thing they're defending themselves against is a uh, uh, extremely endangered slash scientific experiment? sized uh reptile that's that's what we would find out that'd yeah. be like a landmark uh case i also realized since it's lake placid versus anaconda it's the it's the lake, lake itself but not the lake because that it isn't lake placid it's not lake it's placid black, it's black lake, lake but in this movie it's clear lake that's right they go to clear lake just to add another layer onto this so th- this movie is the fifth movie in both series oh it is God. the fifth film in both franchises uh, we have not watched the, nope. all eight of the preceding ones. Absolutely not. No, all we have seen are Lake Placid and Anaconda. So we missed uh, installments two through four on both of those. Yeah. And apparently this, you know, ties back to a lot of those. The um, For all the fans of both. Yeah. For Do all you know, <laughs> like all the that, like dozens of fans Dude, of Dude, I'm sure both right now there are people listening to us who have watched all of these movies. They're almost mad, mad at me for making fun of them. You are. They are. <laughs> uh, this came out in 2015, That's which shocked so me to my core. That is so late to be making. And, you know, they haven't made another Anaconda since, but they did make a Lake Placid movie in 2018. No way. Yes, Who's they did. That? I don't know. Uh, but Why? here's some Who fun facts. Watching these? Just in case, on that you if you didn't do your research, I did a little bit before we started rolling. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the woman in here, the CEO woman, who's um, uh, what's the line? What a bitch! What her, a bitch, yeah. yeah, the one who's trying to get the anaconda. Yeah, she is a new character, but she is the daughter. You may have heard her mm-hmm. in this film mention her father mm-hmm. a few times. Her father was in uh, Anacondas three and four. Do you know who played him? Oh shit. No. Wait, okay, I want to guess. Okay. Okay, is it a horror actor? No. Is it a comedian? No. Is this like, this is a, str- is this like, oh, this is a little sad uh, kind of thing? Like, is, is this a, re- it, it, it would could be. This, could this actor have gone to the Oscars at some point? Yes. Okay, 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 okay. Absolutely. I'm sorry, Lucy, I scared <laughs> you. I got too excited. Uh. <laughs> Ooh, he was he was in an Oscar movie then. Oh, a hundred percent. Ooh, a Lord of the Rings movie. Yes. Ooh, okay. How did you land on? I that I don't know. Right away? I just I just thought I was like <laughs> Oscar movies for some reason, which is Lord of the Rings is well, a weird. You should be able to get there pretty fast. Vigo? No, it's much. John Reese Davies. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, he was in he was in Anaconda, Anaconda. three and four. Could you imagine the? Oh, it is a little tragic that we wouldn't have gotten an Anaconda movie with both John Voight and John Reese Davies. Oh yeah, that because would have been uh, quite the film it and would, quite the set and to quite be on. the xenophobic <laughs> set to be hanging out on. Oh man! Holy also, fuck. Robert England's in this movie. Yes, uh, he Fre- is. Mr. Freddy Krueger, of course, and in this film, he has an eye patch, a hook hand, and a uh, steel leg. Yes, there's a. Lot. He obtained all those things at the end of, I believe, the Lake Placid. He was in a previous film in one of these series. I think it was Lake Placid, and at the end of it, he was attacked. And so this is him still alive. Oh, I was hoping he. It would have been a thing where maybe he was in. A few of the earlier ones, and like each movie, he oh, loses. like lost a part. That'd be yeah, great. and then he lost. But he doesn't lose another body part in this one, though. So he that does not. No, would break the streak. But that'd Sheriff be a lot of fun. Reba, yes, was in other films as well. She is a recurring character in the series. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe that's it. Wow, this this Lake Placid. It's got lore, man. Anaconda family. Mm-hmm. What a weird thing. Yeah. Yeah. What a what a bizarre cinematic universe. Here's the other thing with this movie. There are a thousand fucking characters running around. Oh my god, there's there's more people in this than the an Avengers movie. It's like <laughs> yeah, this this, this really Avengers. is like end this is like all of your you know how like cuz I my reference point for those movies is like the billboards I would drive by cuz I haven't seen any Marvel movies, but like they would have some billboards where it was like the background was like a blue color and it was like a certain set of superheroes. And like mm-hmm. some other billboards were like red background and another set is like this is like the billboards of like the lake 
Placid regulars and the Anaconda are like together in one movie at last. Yeah. Uh, Right off the bat, the (laughs) graphics in this film are awful. We get a really um, PlayStation looking gator. I hate always making that comparison. But that's what it looks looks like. like, You know? I don't know what else to compare it to. There were multiple times watching this film where we just said, oh no allow yeah because of the the quality of the crocodile on our screen and the snake i mean we when we reviewed lake placid i compared the effects in that to a sci-fi original but no then i was then watching an actual sci-fi original yeah, you left the cave i was and also both the original anaconda and the original lake placid both feature animatronics yeah. As various points. Not a no, na- nary a realistic thing. Dude, in they here. were acting with ping pong balls and <laughs> tennis balls this whole damn time. Fuck. I don't even know if they gave them that dignity. I don't know either. Yeah. I don't even know where to start with this. Like <sighs> the the beginning is is like I know I'm watching a good bad movie where my hand hurts from writing from in like the first ten minutes because there's so many weird details. That I, I, I can't wrap my head around. How about the first death is of a scientist who is inexplicably dubbed over. She's ready to lay her eggs. They just need to get fertilized. Now, these two smaller male snakes will provide the catalyst for the procedure. Fine. Like a fucking giallo film. Yeah, this guy has this weird Argento I don't know if what, he had an accent duh. or something that they didn't want in the he, final cut, but. His, his voice is like the, like. He sounds like a, I don't know how to describe him. He has like a movie trailer kind of voice. It's, it's, it's very bizarre. It is very clearly dubbed and doesn't <laughs> fit in all that well. And he's what? He's a scientist? Yeah, because there is a couple of scientists, Robert England, and then that Beach guy. Oh, Mr. Beach. Mr. Beach, <laughs> who whose actor went uncredited for this film. Oh, fuck yeah. 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 Uh, I, I don't know why it made us laugh so hard when we realized that guy's name is Mr. Beach, but, like, it killed me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so they're hanging out in the back of a truck, like a big old semi, and like, they have... The inside of this truck, by the way. Yeah, it's enormous. It's huge. They have a full-scale lab in the middle, and, like, inside this truck, this is, like, a fucking Harry Potter-ass tent where you go inside, and it's bigger. <laughs> they have, <laughs> because they have one of these Lake Placid, I'm sorry, Black Lake Crocs, hanging out in there Mm -hmm. and then they also have the anaconda they have a little like they have some snakes i don't think it's the oh i think it's little okay i think they have because they're doing science yeah the company in this has like a male and female anaconda i think but i think at this point they're not full size maybe i don't know i i could barely watch the screen as i was just furiously writing okay so here here's some names Okay. okay sarah murdoch is CEO lady. She's yeah. She okay. is daughter Dude, of John Reese Davies. Yeah. Yes. She is looking for the Anaconda. I guess the Anaconda is this corporation's science experiment, I gather. Maybe that was explored in the sequels that we didn't see. Yeah, probably. Something like that. Um there was uh, is she the one who's talking about the yes, the uh uh ability uh, to regenerate cells. So basically yeah. a key to immortality lives inside these anacondas, okay? Yep. But, yeah. <laughs> but it's toxic when they tried it in humans and so her father john reese davies apparently discovered that in order to make it uh work on humans they needed a, a hybrid species between the anaconda and a rare crocodile found in black lake mm-hmm. so i think that's where we're at and that's why because beach is working for her so that's why in the beginning of the movie he and robert england who he's hired have captured this crocodile yeah so that they can use it for science to make their and, uh, immortality drug. Right. And Robert England is is like a He's like a poacher hunter. Yeah. He's there to get money. Yeah. He tries to leave the movie 5 minutes He's a in. Crocodile Mercy. And they're like, "No, Robert England, you're staying in this movie so people will watch it." Yes. He literally gets up and tries to leave and they're, and they're like, like, "No, no you, you sit, sit the fuck down." You sit the fuck down. I know. <laughs> and after that first scene ended, both of us were like, "Oh man, that's it for Robert probably, huh?" And Thank then like, God, "No, dude, he's in it for the rest of because, it." Because by the way, He's doing a great oh job. Oh my god, this man's back must be hurting <laughs> from carrying this movie. You know, he's he's great, obviously. Uh Sheriff Reba was fine. She knew what movie she yeah. was in. Um Tully's good. The oh, dad. Tully the dad? Yeah. yeah. I, I mixed him up with Beach because they were just like Beach is fine. Yeah, Beach is there's there's like a few like 
And granted, what they have to work with isn't great. Yeah. Um, the sorority. Uh, horrible. Everyone's terrible. Everyone's bad. Again, probably mostly because of the, the dialogue. There, There's the thing. <laughs> this movie's dialogue is atrocious. Is. But in a different way than the original. Yes, yeah. Th- this is like. <laughs> yeah, it's. <sighs> I am so energized to talk I about this movie. I love coming up with a taxonomy kind of to talk about just the different kinds of bad movie dialogue. Yeah. Like Lake Placid is... Stereotypes? Yeah, and it's like, it's it's trying to be a bad... Like, a, it's trying to be a cheesy... I don't know. Th- this just feels like... There's so much less finesse in this one. <laughs> okay. And it's it's less like the joke especially with the sorority girls, the joke of it isn't like, oh, this is how sorority girls would be written in a bad movie. It's more like, man, aren't sorority girls stupid? And this is what stupid sorority girls would talk like, probably. It just feels a bit less referential. <laughs> yeah. <It> feels- <laughs> but the thing is that, like, the the lead sorority girl is pretty awful, uh, in, in that sense that you were just speaking of, like, look at how awful these sorority yeah. girls are. But they also have the quirky uh, outsider oh, character. The quirky best friend. Let's see. Her name is um, so bad. Fuck. Is it Margo? I think it's Margo. She, that seems like the, the goth friend. Yeah. Name she's like kind of goth. Margo. Yeah. So she's in there and her whole thing is to just be snarky and removed from it. And it's so her. her, her I think it was my least favorite. Ooh, that, her one liners are a nightmare. They're so bad. Yeah. Because there's no way like <laughs> there's no way you can read these lines in a way that is naturally funny. They're just so canned and bad and this person writing this has never been a, a teenage girl <laughs> or a college girl. Unless a woman did write this, in which case, fuck me, that's some crazy it bullshit. It was written by Berkeley Anderson. Berkeley could be a woman. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think either the writer, uh, Berkeley Anderson, or the director, A.B. Stone, which could be anything, <laughs> neither of them had Wikipedia links, and I didn't bother checking out their IMDb's. So I don't know if they've fucking done anything now else. I want to know. Dude, I'm sure they've, I bet, you know, I, I feel like maybe with sci-fi movies, if you're directing a sci-fi, you, you, you just direct for sci-fi. other sci Yeah. <laughs> which, like, honestly, it's, it's solid work. If you can get it. One of my favorite lines in this fucking opening scene is, we're doing very precise work here. And then they immediately drop the vial of blood (laughs) onto the ground. What we're doing here is very precise. Yikes. The croc escapes and then the snake escapes and punches its fucking cartoonish ass out through the side of the truck. Yeah. Uh, They're like running out of this ramp and I don't know what's wrong with this ramp, but everyone falls when they go down (laughs) it. Robert England takes a spill. Everyone's slipping and sliding all over (laughs) this movie. Like at one point the, the deputy tries crawling out of a hole and he's like oh he's just slipping he's like my shoes have no grip yeah, like why is every, yeah. everyone needs new shoes in this movie uh and then it explodes uh there's a yeah. big old explosion the weird thing is though okay so there were four dudes in that scene two scientists beach and robert england mm-hmm. one scientist gets killed the the dubbing guy gets killed the other scientist lives only for like 10 minutes later to have an isolated yeah. scene of him waking up in the forest and then getting eaten by a croc and why didn't they just kill him? Yeah. It's fucking, the editing of this movie it, is bizarre. It'll like. It's borderline experimental film sometimes. <laughs> like, it'll just, just a lot like, of choices. We're going to check in on this scene for like 10 seconds, but then go back to this other scene we my, were talking about. My theory is the coverage gotten during filming, which mm. by coverage, I mean just the amount of stuff that they shot. Yeah, the amount of footage that you have to Of edit like different with. angles and shit. Yeah. Probably not a ton because <laughs> that means more money spent. Yeah. <laughs> and what happens is when you don't have enough coverage, as James and I both know, because we both have worked in post, uh, you end up with some shitty ass edits, regardless of how good of an editor you are, mm-hmm. because you have nothing to work with. So now we're in Clear Lake, and you know because there's a little titles on the bottom saying where you are. By the way, if you like that, don't worry. 
you'll see it a whole bunch throughout this movie because they are constantly Dude, telling you like where you fucking, are. It's like the fucking pilot of Game of Thrones. Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> the one epi- <laughs> the one episode of that series where they had the lower King's thirds Landing. telling you where you are. Oh fuck! Because yes. in that series, there it's a very large continent with lots of different places and and place names. And but this is there's two locations. There's, there's two Clear Lake lakes and Black Lake. And then I at one point, it also tells you you're on like a highway seventy miles from like, a lake. I don't, like, like I don't even know. know the name of the highway it's like i-35 or something i don't i it's so weird yeah i don't know why no it's like route 26 i wrote it down there's literally like a lower third that says all right got it i don't (laughs) cool uh over at clear lake sheriff tull or officer tully no he's a fish he's fish and wildlife yeah so he catches a pair of poachers it's Good. earl they're, and they're, earl I, jr they po- they're just hunters they're well just... they're hunters but they're poaching is the crime oh that yeah doing. it's yeah. not it's off season it must be off season these are like these it's... are two these are like in, in lake placid we talked about how that movie has such disdain for like country idiots oh yeah and this, this just is just this up. is just like these two fucking idiots named they're, earl and earl jr and they're dude. fat and they want cheese doodles <laughs> oh, and, and they just toss their trash behind they them they litter and they're stupid it's like jesus christ movie just fucking <laughs> chill out for two seconds fucking jd vance would have an aneurysm oh my this. god this movie is so mean uh <laughs> <laughs> but really only to them. Yes. And I guess sorority. To the, and the sorority to women. <laughs> but like, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is with both Sheriff, Sheriff Reba and uh, uh, Sarah, the CEO. Yeah. It's, yeah all, She's a bitch. And also, do you know who my father is? Kind of... <laughs> Kind of bullshit. And yeah. then most of the other ladies get are naked. Yeah. Then, yeah. The Guys, rest, there are so many. If you're not like a, if you're not a bitch in this movie, we're gonna see your tits. Is the rule? I guess Margot is just snarky and does. Or Margot and uh, 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 Tully's da- daughter. Oh, but yeah. The well, because she like... she's the main girl, so she can't be slutty. That's true. That's true. That's a rule of film. Yeah. They <laughs> they uh <laughs> they're competent enough. Yeah. But there's so many breasts in this movie. Oh my goodness! They're just nonstop. And wait, which makes me wonder, what was the sci-fi cut of this? Yeah, because this because we watched on... the unrated. Yeah, this. I was don't made know how TV. you edit around all these tits. They have little little like crocodile head cutouts on their boobs and <laughs> little anaconda. No, you know uh, the the fucking Jurassic Park masks that you can get where the, the yeah. jaw moves with you. Those are on the oh, breasts, that's and so they fun. can move. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. I like that. By the way, Earl and Earl Junior. I wrote. <laughs> Earl Jr., he looks like he's maybe 14 or something. Dude, this kid, when he's not out hunting with his dad, is fucking owning noobs on Xbox Live. That's what this kid looks like, and he's using all the slurs in his playbook. <laughs> yeah, you all know, the, 2015, he probably is on Xbox Live. All the Live. gamer words. I would say, like, 10 years prior to that, that this kid was playing Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike, Counter-Strike yeah, for, for sure. sure. <laughs> Dude, absolutely. I don't know. Is Xbox Live still a thing? I feel like now he would, he's in a Fortnite. <laughs> but even now, Fortnite, I think, is not as... Let's not try to talk about the merits of Fortnite. I that can't is talk so about far games. outside of our I expertise. I try to stay current. We can't. It. I can't do it. We can't. <laughs> Earl gets eaten by a bunch of baby crocodiles. He does, yeah. yeah. After t- sending his son, go back to the truck and get your dad some cheese doodles. Yeah, cheese doodles. Because we're both... S- Big sloppy Americans, and it's, 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 the movie has so much contempt for these two. <laughs> hey, you want to talk about our sponsor this week? Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. If you want good, healthy food delivered to you that isn't cheese doodles, like our Earl. friend Earl yeah. is eating. <laughs> I hope we've gotten to that point in the review when I put the ads in or else that makes no sense. Uh, HelloFresh meal deliveries to your door, which is especially helpful right now because we're all trying to stay inside still. Yeah, kind of. If you haven't forgotten about yeah, I think most people have. That it's, old coronavirus. Yeah. That old nasty coronavirus. It's better to not go out if you can yeah. help it. But and even like if there wasn't a pandemic, it's nice getting stuff delivered to you. That's true. <laughs> it's extremely convenient. Uh, it's Like it's sustainable too. You're going to have less food waste than if you're just, you know, making a giant grocery list. And then like your, your fresh stuff always goes Yeah, bad. you buy like an eggplant because you're like, I'll do something with this. And then you don't. And, and then you just got to toss away that eggplant. Yeah. We've all been there. We've all been there. Um, you're also going to save time, too, because everything is pre-proportioned and pre-measured. And then my favorite thing is you don't have to pick 
what you're having for dinner. You yes. don't have to look online for a recipe and see if you have the ingredients. It's all right there. It's all right in front of you, and it's all delicious. Yeah. Or like do that back and forth where we're just like, eh, that doesn't sound good. I don't know. That doesn't sound good either. And yeah. then you just, <laughs> yeah, you just spiral into like nothing sounding great, but you're still hungry. So if you want to try HelloFresh, you can go to HelloFresh.com slash DeadMeat60. And that's HelloFresh.com slash DeadMeat60 and use code DeadMeat60. That's DeadMeat60 to get $60 off your first three weeks. So again, that is HelloFresh.com slash DeadMeat60. $60 off your first three weeks, including free shipping on your first box. You gotta eat. You gotta. <laughs> gotta. <laughs> Our other sponsor this week is Keeps Hair Loss Prevention Treatment. Also, you get this mailed to your house. Yep. I love all this stuff that you can just get mailed to you. It's That's so the world convenient. we live in. It's great. Especially hair prevention stuff. Because mm -hmm. apparently, like, apparently it's easier to, like, if you treat it before it oh, actually yeah. happens. It's, it's easier to keep it than it is to get it back. Yeah. Thus, the name Keeps. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Oh, Whoa. yeah. I have. I have a lot. <laughs> Yeah, the great thing about Keeps, too, is that you don't have to go to a doctor's office to get a hair loss prescription. You can do it online. Yes, which is great. Yeah, so like not only is the, the prescription delivered to you, you can also do the, the consultation online. Yeah, and so you, you, can also get, for it. you can also get the generic versions of uh, the only two FDA-approved hair loss products that exist. Mm -hmm. which, and like generic, that's going to save you money, mm -hmm. which is awesome. We're fans of saving money on the Tiny <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> Two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. I did. Yeah. Yeah. But you've been like taking prevention treatments. I have. Stuff, yeah. 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 I am probably in that two out of three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're in the majority. Yeah. Woo. So if you're also, <laughs> if you're also in the two out of three who are experiencing <laughs> male pattern baldness and you want to try preventing that from happening, you can go to keeps.com slash deadmeat to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash deadmeat. And Reba the Sheriff Lady runs in. This is a weird little B plot, but not even a B plot. It's a Z plot where she runs into this woman who is running around the main street of the town and is like, my daughter's missing and is handing out flyers. And you very quickly hear this dude say, get away from me, lady. Get away from me, lady. As dude, <laughs> there are some choice Ooh, the background lines in this movie. Uh, Let's it, see. It makes this movie. There's get away from me, lady. Uh, one of them, I think, is I'm coming. I have a bum leg. When they're yeah. like trying to get people to a safer zone, there's just a lot of like background characters, yeah, dubbed just lines dubbed in that are so funny. They're very good. Yeah. Uh, but this woman runs up to uh, Reba, the sheriff lady, and is like, "My daughter is missing. Can you help me find her?" I still don't. I think this this is written in so that we can la later see the missing daughter's boobs. We see her boobs, and also her. Uh, she is wearing oh, we see the stringiest the thong. thong. Yeah, it, a full-grown daughter. Oh yeah, yeah. This is like an older woman. Your <laughs> daughter, Jesus Christ. Yeah, uh, no, it's great with with her scene. Is one, it opens with her just wearing this tiny little string, uh, like some butt floss, and so we get butt and then breasts when her fucking who do you compare him to? Oh yeah, so we find out this missing daughter is actually just out with her weirdo boyfriend who I thought looked like Kato Kalen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like a surfer bro, and or so, like a muc like a Culkin cousin, like a weird like you know, offshoot. And culture. they start having sex on the bed and then it pans down and a crocodile's There's under like, there getting hit by yes, their fucking oh bumping bed. And then you hear him scream and that's that's all that plot is. Yep, that's it. Yeah. You don't even see them get murdered. It's just no. sex scene, then the croc under the bed and then cut away to screams. Okay. Another thing that doesn't have any impact whatsoever on this film is the mayor character who talks to Sheriff Reba, except <gasps> for you found I him very attractive. Him. I, the mayor character, 
I, like this movie's not as fun if we don't have this mayor showing up every once in a while. Because yeah, he, he he does kind of leave the movie. I halfway think we through. don't get him after that second scene we with don't, him, but which I'm, is a shame because he's hilarious. I am grateful for all the scenes we get with him. Because uh, one, he has like just a funny joke line where he's like, "Is there something I should be worried about?" Because I'll have to call in a prescription for that. Yeah, like that's just a that's funny, funny joke. That actually, I was like, "Okay, script." That's yeah. a funny joke. But also, he's in campaign mode. Oh, it's so good because there's November, an election November. coming up that November. And Pan- so he's giving, what's he giving away? Coupons for ice cream. Coupons, your mayor has coupons Dude, for free ice cream. That's like some fucking, like, when your mayor's giving out, if you're in a small town and your mayor's giving out coupons for free ice cream and that's like his election strategy, that's so like old school politics. Yeah. That's like fucking gangs in that's New York shit Tammy where I'm Hall. like, yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. It's fucking Tammy Hall shit. The mayor has coupons for free ice cream. Coupons for free ice cream, everyone. Here's another great background line is the guy who walks by and is like, thanks for the building permit. <laughs> yes, just as you casually say to your mayor. Oh, Steve, how are thanks you? Mayor. Nice to see you. Thanks for the building permit. Do this mayor should be, like all mayors should always be wearing the sash that says mayor on it. Like they're <laughs> yeah. fucking Mayor McCheese or something. Oh this my guy, God. I love this dude though. I'm dude, sad Dude, we're like that we... 15 minutes into this movie. But the thing There's is, so is the first, the first bit, like half of this is so front loaded with good stuff and then it gets real boring. Oh, that's middle. true. That's yeah. true. So we'll move through the middle like, quick yeah but there's just a lot going on because we're meeting all these characters and just so many characters we haven't met them all yet we haven't mentioned ferguson who is the uh (laughs) sheriff reba's deputy yeah who's just this little he's like kenneth from 30 rock i like him i like him too i thought he had some moments that were funny i wouldn't be surprised if he was like a ucb comedian oh yeah who got this gig (laughs) if i had to bet (laughs) then we meet some more fucking characters this is when when we meet mr beach and the uh the... Beach is reporting to Sarah, the CEO, yeah. who gets changed in her office behind a screen. Yeah, so into... you see like her silhouette into like a weird her outfit. Her gator outfit. Uh, yeah, it's like gator a safari. Hunting. It's like safari sh- sh- chic. She looks, yeah, she looks like not quite a Jungle Cruise skipper, but like Pretty close. employee who works in the adventure land Oh, like the Q. area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like she's going to be serving me a Dole Whip, you know? <laughs> That's what she looks like. And then, so we meet her. We talk about how this movie goes from zero to... Uh, immortality. Or more, yeah, to we've discovered how to make people immortal, like, real quick. Um, and then we also cut to more fucking characters. There's two cars full of sorority two girls. Because car- first it just cuts to a car. A I'm car like, oh, like, oh, four, four women. Four, oh, more people, okay. But then it cuts to another car full of more girls that all kind of look the same because they're all rushing a sorority. They just have varying hair colors and some of them not even that. So it's just like, I, I hope... Some of them start dying, so I don't have to keep track of yeah, them. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> and we have, God, our lead sorority girl. Oh, God. She's I think trying, her name's man. Tiffany. Yeah. Of course, it's Tiffany. I, she is making acting decisions. Yes, she is. For sure. She's having a fun time, I think, with yeah. it. Yeah. It's just... It's a lot. It's a lot. And her the jokes that she's given, to be fair or not. Her character pretty, sucks. Her character is her insufferable. Character, insufferable. It's insane. She later throws her best friend to towards the crocodile, the crocodile yeah. to get eaten. Yeah. Like, I get that you can talk shit about the Greek system and say people who pledge sororities tend to be a certain way, but they're not evil in a way that they'll <laughs> throw their fucking best friends or into like, a crocodile's mouth or like right it's so that maybe she has a few like 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 regina george is a is a mean girl who's written i mean literally a mean girl who's written like <laughs> where she has moments where you understand why she is as popular guess, as she is this, i guess this, we're asking too much I know, we're asking, of this but movie i'm just saying like maybe a moment where she's like she likes the main character's hair or something but then she she's like that quick to turn into an absolute bitch when it's not to her advantage i don't know i don't know but this character it's just exhausting when a character is a hundred percent of the time like move your fat fucking asses you all look like shit and i hate you <laughs> it's like very cool uh yeah because she hangs anyone... up someone's phone or just like someone's talking on the phone in the car and she grabs and she's like the bitch can't talk right now our main like sorority girl, not the mean one, but our main character we're following because she's pledging this fucking sorority. Her dad is the fish and wildlife guy. We have a whole scene of her calling him 
and we're just Dude. listening to them shoot the shit out the phone. Like, I know that it- I know that the Hollywood hang up is a thing, and that people are like, real people don't talk on the phone like that. You know why? Because if because you want to hear, fucking sucks yeah, just listen to people talk on the phone. If you want to hear a real phone conversation in a movie, go watch Lake Placid versus Anaconda, and you'll see why there are not realistic phone calls in movies. Because what they're just like, they're like, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. What are you up to? Oh, uh, not, not much. much. Yeah. Hey, oh, uh, we're in the car right now. We're driving. Oh, uh, wow. Great. Yeah. It's like the most banal like, conversation. Like, as the dad who is like this fucking hopeless man who is going through his fridge and every single food in it is moldy. His fridge is like in Minority Report when Tom Cruise grabs that fucking <laughs> moldy sandwich eyes. and eats it. Yeah. yeah. His eyes are all. F- uh, that's where this guy lives in. And it's like, is it because like. I, I mean, I'm because they they mentioned later her mom died, mm-hmm. so it's just her and the dad. But it's like as soon as she leaves, his dad's life falls apart. He can't take care of himself. I guess. Oh my god, it's so sad. And he. Just, I do like the moment where they're talking, and he's like, "Yeah, I already turned your room into a man cave with a TV and a lazy yeah. boy." And then he goes in there later, it's, and it's, it's, it's still her room. Like, okay, like, oh, I miss okay, you. Movie. Yeah, but yeah, I, I guess Tully's alright. I do always love, and I guess like if it's her childhood room, it makes more sense, but. Every like even like she's a college age girl and I'm assuming a freshman, yeah. Yeah, but even so it's like you know, I remember growing up and kind of redoing my room so it didn't look like a little kid's room as a teen cuz yeah. you don't want to live in a fucking little kid's room, but I feel like in movies if there's like a daughter character, her room always still looks like a little kid's room. It's pink and <laughs> polka dots. Some I I'm surprised there weren't stuffed animals everywhere. It's very weird. <laughs> but that's why we can't see her boobs, because she's a daughter character. Oh, sure. You know? She's more infantilized. Yeah. I don't know how to say that word. Yeah, she's, like, too precious. Mm-hmm. So the pledges for the sorority and excuse us for hopping all around, that's what the fucking movie does. The, yeah, this... That's what happens when you have a thousand characters. The pledges are forced to go into the lake and just wade, fucking tread water yeah. until we say so. Apparently rushing the sorority is just the main sorority girl i don't know if there's a name for like head sorority chick um but president probably yeah i mean that's how it is with a frat yeah but i'm just like how different like sororities are so bizarre yeah because some of them you can't drink at you can't drink in like any of them i, I it's probably a state has it changed state maybe by state i don't know i just remember also, like you when we were in college like you couldn't drink in them one of the first parties i went to was, was at a sorority. really yeah. i never went to i went to just frat parties yeah it's okay mm. It was fine. The, the booze was all hidden. It was awesome. Oh, fine. <laughs> yeah, but they're out there waiting, and then, we, you know, you get the, the point of view camera from underneath the water coming and approaching them, and then it's these two frat guys from their uh, whatever frat. They're, br- but like, they're like brother frat Where or did whatever. they come from? Yes, because we're getting thing. wide shots of this water from the beach. And this scene, the scene of her, like, starting to haze everyone is pretty long. It's like, very long. She's yelling at them. She's all lined up, and she tells one girl to fucking dig her own grave in the sand <laughs> pretty yeah. much. And she's like just screaming at everybody. So we're we've been in the scene for a fe- like a while. Yeah. So where did these guys come from? Yeah, these guys have been underwater the entire yeah, yeah. No time. one saw them come up for air because they would have had to. They don't have scuba gear or anything. Yeah. There's also a scene with the coroner looking at the stuff they found in the crocodile and he's like, excuse me, this is the only time I have to eat my lunch. I swear I've seen this in another movie. Anyone I've, out there? I know. I'm trying to... It sounds vaguely familiar. The gag of like, oh, the coroner's just so used to this. He's eaten his food. Yeah. The, please let me yeah, know because I that it's sounds killing me. vaguely familiar. Uh, I don't even know what they learned from the coroner checking out the croc. Dude, I don't Either. I don't know. There's don't so many either. scenes of that, and that's the problem. Like uh, Chelsea implied, is the the second third of this movie maybe is people going to places of scenes that we've already watched happen. It's a lot of this movie, and then just being like, "Oh, I think a snake crushed this truck," and we're like, "Yeah, yeah, we saw, we that saw happen. it happen." You're correct. Yep. Uh, CEO Sarah and Mr. Beach and their two muscle guys go to collect Robert England from a bar. I do like when they tell the muscle guys to just try to blend, blend in. in with the locals and they just like lean post up and they're like, <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> yeah, these two are like just mercs. These are like Blackwater looking mercs. <laughs> yeah. There's, I mean, dude, I bet Eric, if Eric Prince could figure out how to to send <laughs> fucking anacondas and crocs into battle. He'd be doing it already. Beach mentions that they couldn't find a VIN number 
on a vehicle. Or no, the the coroner says that. That yeah. was from the and I'm like, but the N in VIN is number. Oh, like ATM machine. ATM machine, yeah. So I thought that was funny. But uh yeah, they That's collect hilarious. Robert England, thank you. <laughs> and there's a fun little bit with the bartender. Robert England gives him a hundred bucks to say he wasn't there. Beach tries giving him forty bucks and the guy is yeah. like, Yeah, still no. So good day for that <laughs> yeah. guy. Mm-hmm. But they do end up collecting uh, Bickerman is Robert England's name. Mm-hmm. But we can just call him Bicker or Robert England. Yeah. I'm so glad Robert England's back in this. I think it's Tully calls someone to yes. ask about something, he- and the person on the phone is like, hey, what about By that race? By the way, what about that race? He's just like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Tully's such a dick. <laughs> Oh, Tully. So, yeah, Tully and Reba determined that the Crocs here from Black Lake, which was the lake in Lake Placid, Mm -hmm. they must have eaten everything up there. So they're headed to a new food source, which must be Clear Lake, this nearby lake, which Tully knows is where his daughter's headed for this sorority pledge thing. So now he's all freaking out because his daughter's in danger. It's one of those, you know, if you're a movie dad and your daughter is in danger, you turn into the Terminator. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, fucking Liam Neeson's in this. <laughs> That's pretty much what happens. He doesn't care about anyone else or anything else. He's just there to rescue his daughter to the point where he is screaming in the face of this girl that they rescue from this boat who is clearly traumatized because yeah. she watched the three other people she was on this boat with get eaten. And he's like, where is she? <laughs> Where's Rachel? <laughs> yeah, speaking of that boat, that's when we get more titties. Yeah, uh, we get this little like cuts. It's like we just—it's these random side characters that we know are all gonna fucking die because we've never met them before, and they're just. Well, it's the two frat yeah, guys. Yeah, it's the two guys who were who like are also aquatic creatures <laughs> yeah, and <have> gills, <laughs> like whose voices are also dubbed. All the yeah! all the dialogue on the boat is dubbed, <laughs> uh, probably because of the noise while filming, but it is. Poorly dubbed. Oh, that's and then you're and, right. It so would be because the boat's really loud. For sure. And then Andrew's talking about how about a little suck face. Little suck face. That's something. People... And you know, you know, tops are optional on my boat. Yeah. And then she's like, on the, it... on the red October, did oh, you see? Yeah, it? it's the like, red October. It looks like a monster truck on the water. It's got like the fucking like lights. But like, what a random. That must be his dad's boat. Yeah. It, like his dad's name in the boat, Red October, after the fucking move. Like it's just. <laughs> And she's like, oh, does that line ever work? And then she immediately takes her top off. Yeah. And uh, see, so, yeah, that's why I have to dub everything because you can't put a microphone in <laughs> Yeah. Oh, my God. No lob yeah, when you're and, topless. Oh, my God. These fucking dudes. They all get eaten. Yeah. Except for the one who's, you know, found well, later. Well, the first guy gets eaten on the boat the he's one who's like, wakeboard, which looks fun as fuck. <sighs> but then he fucking so does fun. a wakeboard flip right into this cracked out <laughs> mouth. <laughs> and, yeah, and then the other bro, like, leans over. And he's like. Andrew, is that you? And it's, it's the croc- clearly a croc. It's like not even obscured. It's not like, oh, there's a shape in the water, but it's clearly just the fucking crocodile swimming up. And he's like, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> and then when the the other chick gets pulled into off the boat, her the survivor was yes. like, no, Heather, no. No, Heather, no. When they realize the guy who's wakeboarding is missing, his his friend driving the boat is like, dude, it's not funny. This is a two hundred dollar rope. <laughs> When he realizes the rope was like a $200 rope. I guess, you know, if you're wakeboarding, spare no expense. Spare no expense. Uh, yeah, the crocs attack the beach and start eating up some sorority sisters. This is when the lead one, Tiffany, gets cornered by one and then tosses her friend Amber towards it. She's like, I have an idea. And fucking throws her friend. Pushes her friend. Yeah. And then later is, of course, like, oh, I tried to save her. She couldn't get away. Yeah. Yeah. The rest of them run to their cars, but none of them have their keys, so a few others get eaten. I I appreciate them just chomping down the numbers here, just whittling it down yeah. to characters because all the extraneous but meat bags need to get taken care of. This whole scene with the cars is like... It's dumb. There's one... Like one of the girls gets, she's like trying to find a car to get into, and the our main our, our sorority president's like, no, I don't like your bikini, and won't let her in, and this girl gets fucking... <laughs> Eat my croc. Dude, this girl, she she's like the 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 sorority president is like the girl in sharp objects if she grew up to rush a sorority. Yes. <laughs> she's a straight up Amabel. Absolutely. Jennifer, I think 
she like gets a can of it's like spray, spray tan. tanner and basically makes a makeshift flamethrower yeah. and like and just lights up these crocs and then our, our alt friend of course knows how to hotwire this car oh, so that's they can right. all get away and as they pull out they just run over a croc and it's oh, it's yeah. just I did not expect them to just run over this croc's head and, and then they just... run over a second one and that one they don't but they just barely but they touch just... that one and it like they flips fucking over just, like clip that they just one clip it. Yeah. and it just is kind of twitching on the <laughs> they ground they leave it to die in pain but then they immediately lose the capability of driving it's like her <laughs> arms turn into noodles or something and they're just fucking whoa, whoa, all over There's the place and run into a tree yeah and, because we gotta we gotta because now it's snakey our, time you know because we gotta set up our scene for a snake yeah there haven't been enough snakes in this snake there's v not, croc there's, movie I, there's not enough snakes in but now we have a giant i think this is the the main anaconda right because its head is bigger than the fucking car yeah and it comes up and starts wrapping around this this car and they all get out except for the except last for one girl one. who just doesn't yeah she's like afraid so it crushes her to death in it and then of course the president is like oh my god no what am I going to tell my dad? He just got me, just that, got car. me that car. Yep. Dude, him and Reba get attacked by a croc who then gets attacked by a snake <laughs> who squeezes it until it explodes. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'm pretty into that. Yeah. I lo- you know, it's it's obviously CG. It doesn't look great. I don't care. The fucking seams of that crocodile bursting open. Yeah, awesome. this the snake in this is because I feel like in every versus movie you inevitably end up having one of the characters kind like of hero. be on the side it's of Jason. The, Jason's Jason the better or, one in um, Freddy versus Jason. I'm trying to think of like Alien versus Predator. Yes, like, the Alien predators, the predators are, are, the, are yeah. the good guys. The, quote so unquote. that's the snake is the like accidental hero for in sure. This for one, sure, yeah. that's a good point. We yeah. should write a book about that. I'm yeah, <laughs> five pages in. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> One of the mercs gets offed and the other one gets got to at this part. Yeah, with uh, Sarah, the CEO, and Beach. Beach, yeah, who is running around Beach. in a... I, I don't think it's quite fuchsia, but it's, it's a... It's bright purple. It's a bright purple shirt. Mr. Beach. It's like a Henley that he he's running around fuck. the jungle and He loves to put his fist up to, yes, to he make loves everyone to, like, stop. stop. And then, yeah, the... Yeah, like... Yeah, the, that guy's having a great time. Whatever you don't know the fucking hand signals. <laughs> Mr. Beach sounds like a fucking lost character. Am I wrong in that? No, I would say he so- He reminds me of a shitty Bond, uh, like, sub-villain. Ooh, yes, yeah. for sure. Because like Diamonds this- Are Forever, which is possibly the worst Bond movie, has Mr. Wynn and Mr. Kid. Is that Roger? No, it's... it's uh, Connery coming back. That's right. Yes. After, after Rod. Uh, no. After which one got married? Fuck. Lazenby. It's, Lazenby, that's what I'm thinking. It's Connery of. coming back after Lazenby's one outing yes. where he gets married. Connery comes back. It's so fucking awful. And those two characters are like very poorly coded gay bad guys mm, who are like, okay. In, oh, it's a bad movie. It's so bad. Oh, man. <laughs> Then, like, Mr. Beach and CEO Lady and Robert all get on a boat. Robert fucking falls out of the boat because that just got to happen in the Lake Placid. You get on a boat, someone's going flying out of it. Yeah, Robert England, that is. Yeah. He flies off and... Uh, and they just drive away. The CEO is just like, no. I don't have time him. to stop for him. And then you see him get pulled underwater. And at, you see him get attacked. Yeah. But then... He gets bit the fuck up. Yeah. It looks like it bites it him in the bites crotch. bites him in the dick. Like right yeah. in the dick. Yeah. <laughs> it bites him in the dick. But then at the end, one of the last shots is him climbing out of the beach. But the thing is that when he's pulled underwater in this scene, there's a shot of the surface of the water. And I was like, the eye patch should float up. And yeah, it didn't. M- missed opportunity. But then at the end of the movie, he climbs out of the beach and his eye patch is gone. So they could have done it. It was right there. My guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm just... This is just a guess. I wonder if they shot that. But like watching it back, it you couldn't tell what it was. Yeah, it's like does this because, play? I don't because it's so. it's just like a black like piece of so it's like when it floats to the top, the water's kind of dark. It's like yeah. what am I looking at? You All know? I know is that when he climbs out at the end, that makeup it's on not his he's eye. holding it down. And it's like he's falling like, off because he's climbed out of the lake. Because so Robert's, because Robert's a fucking professional. It's like, oh fuck, my eye makeup is falling off. Better hold it down. I don't want to do another do take this. of this. I want to wrap and go home. <laughs> do for sure. <laughs> um also uh i don't know when else to say this the camera is very shaky in this movie yeah and it sucks uh the ceo lady 
and Mr. Beach, they find the, the anaconda they've been looking for. And this is when, like, everyone's basically, like, everyone who's alive is now, like, in one spot, pretty Tiffany much. Tiffany gets killed, the, the sorority president. Oh, that's right. Because she's on the ground, and a croc comes up to her, and she punches it in the fucking head. She tries to do the old, like, you hit it on the nose. and <laughs> Something like that. And yeah. it eats her. And then while it's eating her, there's this other sorority pledge. <laughs> the one who's... who had to dig her own grave. Yeah, yeah. It's plain Jane, is what they call yeah. her. And when, after the fucking Tiffany gets eaten, you just see Jane in the background hitting her head against a tree. sobbing. Now everyone's kind of in the same spot. The whole cast together. It's like the end game fucking whatever portion of this movie where they all come through the portals or I don't know. I don't see it. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Kind of. I don't know. I don't, I've only seen it because when people put it on Twitter and they're like, oh, damn, this shit was awesome. I have no context for it. <laughs> yeah, um, people are like, uh, I can't tell you how much I cried at this moment. I'm like, just like, there's like a bunch of people coming through <laughs> portals to me. I don't know what this means. <laughs> I'm glad you all had fun. I, re- I really am. Yes. It's, <laughs> but, like, this is, uh, uh, so they're, <laughs> they see the fucking anaconda, and there's also a croc. There's a lot of shit going on. Oh, yeah. This helicopter's coming to help them capture yes. the anaconda. One of these crocs grabs a snake. I do love this. Whips it up. The snake goes into the helicopter. No, it's the, or is it the snake? Yeah. Yeah. The what I just described in? happens. Because there's yes. two snakes, then. There's a bunch of snakes. Okay. It's not the queen snake. It's just There's another snake. Lot. There's it's... a lot of snakes, a lot of crocs on. Yeah. Running around in here, slithering around. It's a snake that gets thrown a into the helicopter? A snake gets fucking yeeted into the air. Yes, it does. It actually <laughs> does. Like, by this croc, just yeeted like, up into the fucking... <laughs> and, like, gets chopped up by the helicopter plates in this it fucking helicopter. helicopter. Dude, it's actually pretty It's fucking great. great. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, so now uh, R.I.P., uh, whoever those people were, they were on the. They were part of the CEO's team. I just yeah, they were coming to help c- pick up the snake because yeah. they want that snake. But then the snake uh, attacks Mr. Beach and like wraps around him, mm-hmm. right, and then eats him it whole. Eats him. It, it just puts him all in the mouth, and then we get. An inner cut snake to shot inside of the snake. Yes, cut to in interior. And they should have had the the lower, lower third. third. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and inside of snake, yeah. and then he's like. He has a grenade, I guess. He has a grenade. And he's like, bye-bye, baby. Everyone's alive who's yeah. left. CEO, who I thought for sure would die, she gets arrested. I thought she'd get eaten by a snake. I thought her own child, or you know, because she keeps calling She calls it her, her baby. baby, yeah. I thought, you know, it was going to turn on her, but no, she oh, just, yeah, she just gets the... arrested, and then there's like a weird prison rape joke. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was weird. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. <laughs> um, And then the dad, by the way, the dad calls his daughter babe multiple times in the movie okay is that, that it's weird is that a thing that i don't the, like yeah. that yeah oh babe mm. uh, yeah that's weird i don't know it's weird lots of other names you can call your daughter affectionate nicknames you're just baby baby yeah you would use baby i mean we call lucy baby but that that's a cat I guess. It, it's like a baby. I would call a baby. Lucy's an but eternal it's like, it's baby. Like, it's so much less weird than babe. I think they're both weird for a teenage daughter. I guess. Baby? I don't know. That's like the term in, in songs about sexual partners. <laughs> <laughs> baby. Lucy's a baby because she's eternal, eternally a baby. Yeah. I'll call a baby a baby, but once they become a- I don't know. You call a kid a ba- your baby. Like, oh, my baby. Yeah, but not a teenage girl <laughs> who's in a bikini running to give you a hug. <laughs> That's weird. She's like it's naked. All, and none of it's to... good, okay? It's all very weird. I thought that when she originally was calling him that she was dating this older cop, all right? Uh, yeah. I didn't think That's he the way was, they're talking to each other. I didn't think other. he was her dad. Uh, and then we get the slowest scrolling credits I've ever seen in my oh life. Oh, my God. Okay. They want you to read every fucking the letter. Cre- the credits? <laughs> are so fucking slow. We wanted to I check honest- to make sure there wasn't a post credit scene, so I started speeding it up, it and it still, still didn't get up to normal credit speed. Because I feel like even in iMovie, when you make, like, credits, it gives you, like, an option to, like, you can time it out so that... Like, they fucked up an they input. Fucked, yeah. Something happened, and they exported, and they were like, it's too late. It's too late. It's, it's, it's fine. the credits. It's, it's fine. No one's going to watch the credits. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, and there's one last scare. There's like the one last crocodile that pops up on the beach right before the credits. We did it. We're all, we live. Oh, yeah. And then a random croc comes up at the shoot. And they just death. fucking just pump that croc. Oh, and then we do bullets. see baby eggs. We see eggs hatching. Oh, my God. That's right. Because the crocodiles. At some point, yeah, the, the CEO 
mentions crocodiles at some point, and I'm very confused as to like because we see a bunch of baby. Cro- are those baby just supposed Earl, to be baby? But I think they're just baby. Those gator, are just baby or crocs. Gator or crocs. Yeah. So then the end, I, I'm guessing those, those are the are crocodiles. But it just looks like snakes. No, it's a snake with a croc head. That's a big old croc jaw. It on had it. a croc head. Oh it had, yeah, like, like snake teeth though. No, no, those are croc teeth. I yeah. have to look at it again. That's a, that's a, it just was kind of weird. That's looking. a crocodile smile. Yeah, that he was given. It's just weird that the ending, where I think it should have been like, "Oh shit, crocodiles!" Instead, it was like, "Are oh, is that the croc? Like, is that what? okay?" <laughs> this was 2015. We're five years later now. Are we gonna get a sequel with the crocodiles? Dude, I hope so. I'll be in it. Sci-fi, call me. I will. I'll be in it for free. Well, let's not, you know, I'll take some of your time, and, you know. <laughs> no, that's right. I'm going to have some respect for myself. I would like to get paid to be in it, but I will be in your um, Crocaconda sequel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, Lake don't, Placid, make, please don't make me show my tits. Thank Lake you. Placid versus Anaconda 2 Crocaconda. Call us. Call us. God, yes. would we do it, though? Yes. A hundred, like, yes. Dude, once you're in a movie like this, though, that's it. I don't think you're you're making it to another movie, and I would like to make it to another movie. You think like once you're in a sci-fi, you don't. You don't get out of that. <sighs> I don't know. Like you can hmm. dip your toe in if you're Robert England. That's you're true. Robert England, but I don't think any of these other people are. are... Well, then that's what, okay. I need to get like mega successful, so then I can like do some weird movie tourism where I'm just for fun. I'm like, oh, I can be in like a, you know, I'm just gonna yeah. like let's explore a little bit. So maybe hold off on Lake Placid versus Anaconda Two Crocaconda. Uh, just a few more years. Mm-hmm. And then in the meantime, other other producers, go ahead and put us in your movies so that we will have the clout to we be need able to do, do this We need film. to do like an Ari Aster movie. Mm-hmm. And then I think we'll be good. Like we've earned. You some, think one Ari Aster would do it? I think we've earned enough goodwill to then do a sci-fi original. Okay. All right. So Mr. Aster. I feel like those two like even each other out. Sure. We'll just be back to square one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like we'll just like right now we're doing fine, you know. Yeah. Like we'll, sure, yeah. It'll cancel. I don't mind being where we it'll are. It'll cancel out the prestige movie, but that's fine because like whatever. Okay, all right. I'm content. Go with ahead, my Mr. Life. Mr. Aster. Maybe Mr. Eggers, if you're watching oh or God, listening to this, yeah. go ahead and give us a call. Uh, I'll jerk off to a wooden mermaid if you need me to. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Would have bought it, but it got up to like a hundred thousand fucking. I was bucks I was about something. to ask like what did that sell for? It was yeah. six digits for sure. Someone little... really wanted to jerk off on that <laughs> thing, dude. <laughs> oh, but people who haven't seen The Lighthouse are like, what the what? fuck are they talking about? Okay, that's it. It's late. Uh, it's very late. Yeah, and we've been talking about Lake Placid versus Anaconda for over an hour. Forever. I could talk more. There was more stuff that we didn't mention, but, you know, there are limits to how much of your time, listener, that we want to take up. So yeah. thank you for spending time with us. This is a lot of fun. We have next week's episode already in the can. That's More right. feature flicks. What? Oh, creature, creature I was like, features. Feature, I was like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, yeah. creature feature flicks. Uh, we're going to be reviewing the movie Them! Yeah. Exclamation point. Oh, did you move that blue? I did move it. Sorry. Okay. Uh, giant Ants. Giant Ants from 1954. It's- a lot of fun and we had a guest on for Ivo Tree's Little uh, you may know her as Horror Movies and Beyond we've been working for like we've both been messaging each other for months trying to uh, like I've been wanting her on the podcast then coronavirus <laughs> happened and we figured out a way to make it finally work awesome it's a lot of fun yeah she's great so. so check out them if you want to watch the movie ahead of time it's mm-hmm. a good uh, 1954 movie man oh yeah like it's 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 fun mm-hmm. it's yeah. giant ants Check it out. Uh, Until then, though, you can follow Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm at Carebeck, C-A-R-E-B-E-C-C on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, deadmeatstore.com. And email deadmeatpod at gmail.com with, you know, whatever you want to say. Be nice. Until next week, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. And this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. (laughs) 